Hello, I'm Dr. Benjamin Dome from the American Hip Institute, presenting on endoscopic gluteus medius repair using the tendon compression bridge technique with knotless 2.6 fiber tack anchors. The abductor tear or gluteus medius tear has become known as the rotator cuff tear of the hip. In this particular case, this was a 73-year-old female who had had a previous posterior approach hip replacement done at an outside facility. At the time of the surgery, the surgeon noted a gluteus medius tear, but felt that repair was not needed. She continued to use a cane for ambulation, and her weakness and gait disturbance was affecting her quality of life and activities of daily living. She walked with a significant limp, not so much pain, but more weakness and gait disturbance. Notably, she had also had a previous spine fusion. She had on physical exam a left Trendelenburg gait, positive Trendelenburg sign, one plus tenderness at the greater trochanter, and only three out of five abductor strength. She also notably had a positive modified resisted internal rotation test. The resisted internal rotation test is a test that we developed and published in the Journal of Hip Preservation Surgery, where the examiner essentially externally rotates the hip and asks the patient to do the opposite, to internally rotate against resistance. So note the positioning of the examiner's hands, my hands in this case, on the patient's knee and ankle, causing them to actively internally rotate against my resistance. In the flex position, this engages the gluteus minimus and the anterior part of the gluteus medius and reproduces pain in someone who has tears of those tendons. On imaging, she had a well-fixed hip replacement on the left side. Note the spinal fusion as well. And on MRI, we noted plentiful bursitis on the left side, and there was a suspected gluteus medius tear as well. So we proceeded with an endoscopic procedure, and on endoscopy, we probed the tendon to see that it is delaminated on its deep side. So we engage in the tendon compression bridge technique for repair, starting with marrow stimulation using a microfracture all or pick. We then place our knotless fiber tack anchors. These are the knotless 2-6 fiber tack anchors, and we place them in pairs. The pairs are linked to one another, so we link A to B and B to A, and this creates the tendon compression bridge. So as we pass the repair suture from A to B and the repair suture from B to A and tension them, this seats the tendon compression bridge over top of the tendon, compressing it against the bone which we have just done a micropuncture on to create marrow stimulation. This can be done with one or two or even three pairs of anchors, creating multiple tendon compression bridges across the tendon. In considering greater trochanteric pain syndrome, or GTPS, there are a number of entities that are responsible for pain or disability in this area, including bursitis, external snapping, and of course, gluteal tears. The gluteal tears may fall under the categories of partial or complete tears and may be treated with endoscopic or open means. The open abductor repair had retrospective studies showing improved patient reported outcome scores, gait, and function at minimum of one year follow-up in multiple series. There have been some complications reported, including re-tears and hematoma collections. Endoscopic abductor repair, on the other hand, also now has ample literature showing its effectiveness, with multiple studies showing improved patient-reported outcomes at two-year follow-up. There have been zero reported abductor re-tears or hematoma collections in these particular studies, and endoscopy gives the surgeon the ability to concomitantly address intraarticular pathology in the same operative setting by doing an arthroscopy of the hip and an endoscopy of the peritrochanteric space. So that is an advantage of the endoscopic approach. This is our GTPS treatment algorithm at the American Hip Institute. Beginning on the left, a partial thickness gluteus medius tear is typically treated with an endoscopic repair. A full thickness tear with no retraction may also be treated with an endoscopic repair. As we move into a full thickness tear with retraction or fatty atrophy, this likely merits an open surgical repair. And a massive tear or irreparable tendon may warrant open surgical repair with an acellular dermal allograft or even a gluteus maximus transfer. 
So if you look at all the treatment options along the bottom, you can see there are a number of arrows in the quiver. The endoscopic gluteus medius repair techniques can be divided into three major techniques for two major entities. Partial thickness tears can be treated with a transtendinous repair or tendon compression bridge technique. The full thickness tears are typically treated with double row suture bridge fixation. So here is a, an example of a full thickness atrophied or retracted gluteus medius tear where we treated it with a double row compression suture bridge with a cellular dermal allograft. There's the tendon we're gripping in the video. Here we've passed the sutures through the gluteus medius tendon and the arthroflex graft. The swivel lock anchors allow us to compress the entire construct with the tendon and the graft using knotless mattress stitches. And you'll see as the graft is pushed down onto the greater trochanter, we now set ourselves up to fixate the graft and tendon construct with the knotless mechanism from the swivel lock anchors in the proximal row. So here you see we tension the mattress stitches one at a time. Each mattress stitch will compress a part of the tendon and graft complex against the bone, and the graft itself acts as a ripstop for the mattress stitches, which is especially valuable where there is insufficiency of the tendon tissue or atrophy of the tendon tissue. We cinched the mattress stitch using the knotless mechanism in the swivel lock. We then proceed to distal row fixation, and these are swivel locks in the distal row fixation. Here we complete the first anchor in the distal row, bringing the fiber tapes from the proximal row across the graft and tendon complex. And finally, we can perform dog ear reduction using the knotless mechanism from the distal row of swivel lock anchors. So here we see a dog ear of the graft being reduced with that knotless mechanism with a very simple mattress stitch. Here's the final construct. We have approximated a broad surface area of tendon and graft supporting the tendon across the lateral facet and posterior superior facet of the greater trochanter. Finally, gluteus maximus transfer is salvage option for the irreparable gluteus medius tear. This is indicated in irreparable tears with severe atrophy or status post total hip replacement with a vascularity in the area. Here is a flap of the gluteus maximus. Our technique involves using about the anterior third of the gluteus maximus and the posterior third of the TFL, or tensor fascia lata. So we take these as one flap, the anterior third of the gluteus maximus and the posterior third of the TFL, and then we repair that flap to the greater trochanter so that it acts as a gluteus medius, as an abductor, and also as a, a fixed restraint because the fascia that comes with the flap uh, is now connecting the ilium to the greater trochanter. And this can very much help with a person's gait where there is insufficiency of the abductor mechanism. So returning to our algorithm, we've covered partial thickness tears, full thickness tears without retraction, full thickness tears with retraction or fatty atrophy, and the massive tear or irreparable tendon using these combination of techniques, including endoscopic repairs, open repairs, open repairs with the dermal allograft and gluteus maximus transfer. Some data to wrap up. This was our initial series first published in JBJS in 2015 on a pilot series of 32 patients who had concomitant arthroscopy and endoscopic gluteus medius repair. These were a combination of full thickness and partial thickness tears who had a very significant improvement in their outcomes. Subsequently, we looked at endoscopic gluteus medius repair with concomitant arthroscopy at five-year outcomes, showing durability of the favorable outcomes that were achieved from two to five years. And we then looked at return to activity in patients older than 50. Most of these patients are older than 50. And in this series of 84 patients, we had significant improvement in all PROs and a high rate of return to preoperative activities at the minimum of two-year follow-up. And finally, this is the results in JBJS of the combined transfer of the gluteus maximus and tensor fascia lata for irreparable gluteus medius tears using contemporary techniques. With short-term follow-ups, we found no secondary surgeries and no failures or complications noted. Clearly, this does remain a salvage procedure and expectations should be measured. So to conclude, 
The arrows in our quiver are many in treating GTPS. The GTPS is a common cause of lateral hip pain, and it can include a variety of entities, including trochanteric bursitis, external coccyx saltans, or gluteus medius and minimus tears. Non-operative management may include physical therapy, NSAIDs, uh, shockwave therapy, or injections, and surgical management can be highly successful when we employ this variety of techniques for the right purposes, including endoscopic and open repairs, allografts when needed, and gluteus maximus transfer for salvage situation. Thank you very much.